Welcome back Psych Dude family. It's good seeing each and every one of you guys today. So this video is going to be special because I'm actually taking you to one of my jobs at an urgent care. So you're probably wondering, are there urgent cares that are specific to psychiatry and mental health? Yes, there are. So this one is located in uh, the state of California and I love it. It's one of the things where it's the first one of its kind in this specific city that I work in. So the beauty of the urgent care is because it allocates resources for people instead of going to the emergency room right away or instead of going to the ER right away and getting hospitalized or going to a psychiatric facility and getting hospitalized, this actually gives them the opportunity to go to their urgent care and see if we could evaluate them right then and there to see if they actually need to be hospitalized or if they can just go home and uh, get resources. So the beauty of uh, urgent care is, like I said, is you're able to get those resources right away and you don't necessarily have to make that appointment. So in this facility, there's two different uh, portions of the actual facility. So there's the walk-in center. So usually the walk-in centers are typically the people that either need med refills, um, their family members are concerned or they're concerned that they might be having an episode or uh, or they're just coming in trying to get therapy so those are the typical ones that you actually see but there are other instances where they're extremely depressed they want to hurt themselves um, or their street or mother or family's concerned that they're in danger to someone else things like that and they do walk in so that's one section where they can actually walk in those hours are relatively restricted but for the most part it's you can technically go all day so that's a portion and then there's actually a different section where they can actually have a bed and considered hospitalized so what does hospitalized mean so they're either on a 5150 5585 so 72 hour hold um, or they come in voluntary and they actually feel like they're a threat to someone else threat to someone or uh, other people threat to themselves things like that so it's definitely one of those things where you kind of get both of the experiences in terms of sorry in terms of inpatient wise and um, the urgent care so in the back um, well we have them in the back so in the back where they have their beds is they get evaluated by psychiatric nurse practitioners so the psychiatric nurse practitioners get to evaluate them or either psychiatrists also get to evaluate them and see if they're actually uh, deemed needing that uh, 5150 or 5585. And if they are, then we're gonna go ahead and hold them. But the most that we can hold them for without determining if they need higher level of care is typically 24 hours. But if they need higher level of care and there are no beds available, we'll hold them even longer. Otherwise, that's pretty much the gist of it. So during these times, we're going to be able to actually provide them these services and um, either get them started on medications, uh, adjust their medications, so many different things that can occur. And we're able to do all of those things because we have that urgent care part and then we actually have the holding part where we can hold them if they are on hold. So other instances also is we're able to actually determine if we can break that hold. If they were just put on the hold and it isn't necessarily necessary and we can break the hold um, of course you have to be lps uh, designated but you're able to break this hold and then determine okay they don't really necessarily need to be able to be on this hold um, let's just give them resources or you have to make a safety plan in case anything occurs but you do have that ability to break that hold if they do come in on a hold well um probably talk a little bit more going forward but um i just got to work i need to clock in and then we'll go from there so yeah like i said today is going to be a chill day i hope i shouldn't say chill today is going to be a good day because i get to work in urgent care and like i said this is um one of those jobs where it's kind of unpredictable because you don't necessarily know what type of patients are going to come in you don't know how many patients are going to come in and you don't know yeah like that's the biggest thing is unpredictable it's like an er you don't necessarily know how many patients are going to be in the er or going to walk in or get transported by ambulance or by the police department and you don't know that 
and I love it because some days are really slow and some days are extremely busy and those busy days makes the shift a little go by a little bit faster so I'm gonna go ahead and walk in and then I'll get back to you guys soon enjoy this video and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at this I do. stay tuned guys enjoy alrighty guys so I'm in my office now and I've already seen about five different patients and I usually have another nurse practitioner that comes in around 9 a.m. and I get in at 8 a.m. So I like what I like to do is I like to see the patients that have not been assessed. And luckily for me, I only had two patients that I actually had to do a full psychiatric evaluation and the other three I just have to provide progress notes. And so throughout that period of time, it does go by fast. It's not one of those things where you have that hour long appointment and be able to see them for evaluation like in outpatient settings or in other settings. But this setting is you actually have to do a thorough assessment because at the end of the day, if they're on a hold, if they're not on a hold, you still have to assess them because it's an urgent matter. And you have to try to keep the actual uh, inpatient side as a simple inpatient hospital. You have to be able to assess them well and see if they need to be on a hold, if they don't need to be on a hold. But your psychiatric evaluation is similar, but you have other different uh, factors that need to be assessed, such as SI, HI, um, if they meet criteria for that hold, the 5585, the 5150, things like that. So you're probably wondering what warrants a 72 hour hold? So there's different criteria you must meet. So you're either a danger to yourself and or danger to others and gravely disabled. And what gravely disabled means is as a result of a mental health disorder such as schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, things like that, you're unable to provide your basic needs, meaning basic needs for food, basic needs for clothing, or basic needs for shelter. And that's the um, actual definition for California. I'm not exactly sure what it means for other states, but for California, that's the basic definition for gravely disabled. So in order, if you meet one of those three criteria, then you are actually able to be put on a hold, a 72 hour hold. And that's what we justify in terms of whether or not we're gonna either keep them here or push them to a higher level of care. So you're probably wondering, what does a typical day look like for an urgent care psychiatric nurse practitioner? And honestly, it just depends on your day. Every day is a little bit different, but for the most part, since I'm just only here on Sundays, um, pretty steady. So I get in at 8 a.m. and whatever patients there, depending on if they're in the back, they're hospitalized, things like that, I have to be able to assess them. So typically I look over the sheet, get report from the nurses and being able to see what patients are there and why they're there. And based on that, you have to use your prioritization. So once you prioritize which patients you want to see first, then you can go from there. So typically, depending on if they're a danger to themselves or if they have an even danger to others or if they haven't even been um, assessed, I'll typically start off there and then work down the line on whether which patients I want to uh, discharge, which patients I will still want to refer to the higher level of care, and then which patients we just want to keep there until we reassess them later on in the day. And then based on that, um, I see all of those patients at the same time, depending on which patients are coming in the front, which is the actual walk-in urgent care center, then I have to do those assessments as well. So today it was I don't know why I said chill, but it was super busy. So in the back, we had about five patients. I saw two new patients, and then I had to reassess three patients. And then also, I had five new patients in the front, all while being split up against amongst me and the other nurse practitioner. But for the most part, those ones are relatively... I can't say simple because they do walk in and um, they do come in by themselves, but for the most part, they can either be med refills, they could be depressed, like I said earlier, anxious, bipolar, manic. And these few instances, we had patients where they do come up with these diagnoses and do come up with a lot of the acute symptoms. So we either have to hospitalize them and keep them overnight and reassess in the morning or we give them medications and then let them go on their merry way. Um, one thing I do like about urgent care is how it's relatively 
unpredictable. I like how it's unpredictable because some days, like I said earlier, are really slow and some days are extremely fast and you get things done. So yeah, it's you get best of both worlds, like the outpatient wise and the inpatient wise, and I love it. So right now, um, I'm just getting charting done. So let's talk about charting. So charting is a little bit different, um, but at the same time, it's similar, but you have to chart some ways as you're an outpatient setting so you're just providing them resources um, having a plan of care what you want to do going forward and then other times you have to chart like you're inpatient like uh, vital signs Q shift um, you put in your medication orders you put in your talk screens you put in um, which medications you want now which medications you want later things like that you're able to actually put that in your plan of care and that's what I like about it uh, I think that if you want to have best of both worlds and you want to be exposed to both sides i would say look into urgent care because a lot of the urgent cares around the country they do have similar um settings where you'll have the walk-in part and then you'll actually have the part where you can actually keep them until you refer them to a higher level of care i don't want to go in too much depth on what we chart because i already um, explained that to you in my other video on the day in the life of a psychiatric nurse practitioner but for the most part, like I said, those are the differences amongst the two is you have to plan for outpatient and what are we going to provide them in terms of resources and how we're going to take care of them further. And then also you have to plan on how you want to take their, care of them within the unit. So those are the big differences. So definitely take in consideration depending on where you want to work and how you want to chart. But for the most part, when you're doing your psychiatric evaluations and your follow ups, they're going to be somewhat similar. It's just a plan and how you're going to intervene in those instances is where it differs. Also, one thing that I did notice working for this company is how many resources they have. So say, for example, you're a patient that walks in. OK, so right when you walk in, you have to do paperwork. Obviously, it's just a lot of paperwork, right? So once they do paperwork and then once they complete it, then they get to actually see a therapist. So the therapist is able to see them, evaluate them and see what's going on if they either need to go to get evaluated by the medication side or if therapy is going to suffice but more than likely they're going to have to see the medication side just so they can make the determination whether or not they need to be admitted or if they can get discharged to, through the community and then just being able to follow up with the actual mental health facility outpatient mental health facility so once they see them then they're going to see us and based on our evaluation we're going to be determining whether or not we're going to do medications um, if they're, we're going to give them refills or if we're going to admit them, essentially. But for the most part, usually walk-ins will, yeah, it can go either way. But like I said, what's cool about it is that they provide them all the resources. So they provide them with shelter resources. They provide them with uh, housing resources. So pretty much the same thing, sorry. So housing resources, they provide them with um, transportation resources. They provide them with resources for outpatient clinic and then provide them resources for um, therapy also. So that's the beauty of this outpatient clinic is they're able to provide all of those things along with medication management. So if you wanna work in this setting, definitely take into consideration. So yeah, um, other than that, that's pretty much the end of our video. Um, if you do enjoyed this video, if you want more in-depth detail on this actual setting, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, have a wonderful day as always.